Welcome to Mr. S Travel Quest. I'm Nick. I'm Ruth. And today we're going to highlight and discuss our top 10 Texas State Park. Stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We're a channel that focuses on Texas State Parks and beyond. Today we're going to discuss and highlight our top, top 10, 10 Texas State, State Park. Park. We visited 20 different Texas State Parks in 2020, and here's our number 10 pick. The massive pink granite dome rising above Texas Hill Country, Enchanted Rock, is one of the more popular parks we have here in Texas. I enjoyed hiking the Summit Trail and seeing the 360 degree views of the Texas Hill Country. So when we went uh, in January of last year, that was the first park we went to, remember? Yeah. That right. was the very first park that got us hiking, or that was the first one we were gonna start with. But I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, you better go in January, because <laughs> going in the summer. Remember, I went, I took the kids yeah, over the summer. Yeah, we we went in January, and it was still warm going up and down. I think um, they sell snow cones at the bottom, and we were tempted to buy a snow cone, but we didn't. So I don't know how you did it in the summer. Yeah, it was hot. Uh, guys, I recommend not going over the summer. Uh, there is no shade at all. Um, so when you get to the top, you're gonna be hot, you're gonna be sweaty, uh, but the views are amazing. Number nine, Pennales Falls. Just 30 miles west of Austin, Texas, the falls were great just to sit next to and listen to the water. We enjoyed a picnic on our visit and just hung out. They also have some of the nicest bird blinds I've seen in a state park. The park has something for everyone. Biking, hiking, horseback riding, and even tubing during the summer. It's worth the visit when visiting Texas. Now, when we went to Pedernales, what did you like about it? Um, I liked that it was easy to get down um, to the main area. Um, the overlook was really nice. I mean, you can see um, everything from the overlook. You know what I love about uh, Pedernales? Like, that's another like kind of popular and kind of busy park. Even though it was busy, because remember we parked? We had to yeah. park, find parking in the back, right? Um, that's a busy park, but when we got down to the falls, it felt like we had the, the whole park to ourselves, right? It's pretty spread out. Yeah, it's so, spread out. And this is, this is before, this is pre-COVID, guys. Um, it's a beautiful park, it's, it's spread out. Um, the well, water is amazing. When we got to the other side, um, I don't remember what that, um, when you go swimming down at the lake, uh -huh. I don't remember what that area is called, but it's a long way down there. <laughs> and we went swimming. We still got in the water. It was January and it was so beautiful that we still got in. Yeah, in this, the water. And, and this is this park is number nine on the list. Um, we went early in the year. I'm pretty sure the park is way better over the summer because uh, you can actually get in the water and enjoy it. It's not too cold. But it's near Austin, Texas. Worth the visit. Check it out when you get a uh, when you get a chance. Number eight, Colorado Bend State Park. I didn't know what to expect when visiting this park. All I know is that we wanted to see Gorman Falls. Gorman Falls is a 70 foot waterfall and it looked beautiful. So what did you think about um, Colorado Bend State Park? Um, well, I liked it. I liked that. Um... It was kind of challenging in a different way to get there because the rocks are so big. All right, let me, I'm gonna stop you real quick. All right, guys, this is where it's funny. All right, so this park it was the first park that had a challenging, I want to say it's a, a, a challenging terrain that we visited. Um, and and I didn't tell I didn't tell Roof here like, you know, it wasn't a loop. It was going there, going down and seeing the falls. And I want to say it was a three miles round trip. Um, I don't know. I, I think so. Well, I anyway, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not a loop. You have to ask, there's, there's a lot of rocks and you're going downhill the whole time. And then you see the falls. It's beautiful, it's an amazing. Um, but then going back up, now that's a challenge because- Because you have to go up. You gotta go up, you have to do some climbing. Um, and you're already tired. If you're not ready for that, you're gonna be tired going back up. Um, and then we saw the, the scenic overlook. Over, overlook. Yeah. And that, I think that was two more miles added on to it. But make sure you wear boots because the rocks kill your toes. Yeah, that park is definitely worth visiting. And you want to book an online in advance when visiting this park. 
uh, this park is hard to get into over the summer and uh, on weekends, so book in advance. Number seven, Dinosaur Valley State Park. The official dinosaur capital of Texas, located in Glen Rose, Texas. We went over the summer and my son loved it. This park has real dinosaur tracks located inside the park. I don't know where else you could swim or hike to real dinosaur tracks. If you or your kids love dinosaurs, this park's for you. Now, what, what do you think about Dinosaur Valley State Park? Um, I think it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for all of us, looking for the dinosaur tracks, and um, it was kind of like you were on a quest to go look for dinosaur tracks, and we even had to get in the water. Um, we didn't care. We weren't wearing any water shoes or anything, but we just wanted to see the dinosaur tracks. So you know what? Um, we just jumped in. I think the dog jumped in too. Yeah, we had we brought Peanut with us, and uh, she she jumped in. Um, you know, this park was one of the first parks that we wasn't really focused on hiking. Um, usually, when I make these videos, we kind of uh, highlight the hiking trails, point of interest, and then at the end of the video, we do campsites. That video that we made. We kind of was focused yeah, on point of interest. Yeah, we just wanted to go. We really were just wanting to go. We just wanted to see the dinosaur tracks. tracks. And, and uh, park. the park's cool. Like, you know, a lot of people ask, are there real dinosaur tracks? And they're real dinosaur tracks. And you swimming. You're in the water. I want to say it's Blue Hole and then the ballroom dance site. There's there's tracks all over. But, yeah, so if you, you love dinosaurs and that's just something that you're interested in and your kids are interested in, go check out Dinosaur Valley State Park. Number six, Guadalupe River State Park. Many folks come here to swim, but the park is more than a great swimming hole. I know we enjoyed hiking and seeing the beautiful scenery. The giant ball cypress trees were amazing to view in person. They have another side of the park and perfect for hiking, the Bauer Unit. This park is also a short drive from San Antonio and Austin. I can see this park being packed during the summer months. So Ruth, what did you think about this park? Well, I like everything about it. I liked um, the scenic overviews. I liked um, going down to the river. I'm getting to visit the big cypress trees um, and the Bauer unit. The Bauer unit was amazing. We got lost just because <laughs> I told you to take one way. Ruth, let me see the map. I was wrong. Guadalupe River State Park, it's Listen amazing, up. great for swimming, right? But unfortunately, we didn't get to swim at this park, and somebody's a little upset with me about that, but there's always next time, and this summer, we're already making plans for Guadalupe River State Park. Anything you wanna add, or? No, I, I mean, I <clears throat> wanted to go swimming, but I did enjoy the Bauer Unit. I mean, I think the hiking was great. Yeah, the Bauer Unit is pretty cool, but you know what the coolest thing about the park? Like, obviously, we didn't swim, we can't talk about swimming, but those trees, tell me those trees wasn't cool. No, they were cool. But I think we should mention right quick that it does take you a while. It takes you about 20 minutes to get from oh. Guadalupe, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the main area park, all the way to the Bauer unit. Well, you know what? Guadalupe River State Park and the Bauer unit, they're the same um, park system, but they're actually in a different town. And uh, we actually got lost. Like we took a wrong turn, remember? Yeah, it was like just a Yeah, it's like little... a curvy road and and we took a wrong turn somewhere, but we found it and what's cool about it is that they have the code, a gated code. Uh, it's right there in the park and you see a lot of people jogging, bike riding um, in the Bauer unit. So if you're big on hiking like us, we love hiking, uh, check out the Bauer unit if you visit Guadalupe River State Park. Before we get into the top five, like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to keep up to date. We post state park videos all the time on the channel. Now, back to the video. Number five, Lake Mineral Well State Park. This park's about 45 minutes west of Fort Worth. All I have to say is Penitentiary Hollow. This park is another rock climbing park. When you walk into the hollows, you don't even feel like you're in Texas anymore. The history of the park and town mineral wells is interesting as well. You have to try out the flavored mineral water if you visit this area. This is one of our favorite parks that we visited in 2020. So I know this is one of your favorite parks, Mineral Wells, right? So tell me, tell me a little bit about it. Um, well, I like the park because as soon as you come in, you get to see the water. What, is, what do they call it? The spill? The spillway? The spillway. You get to see it right away. Um, you well, get tell, to, them, tell them about it, uh, what the spillway is. Well, you get to drive right next to it. 
It's like the water is right here and your car is just driving. Well, when you when you first go into the park, you're gonna notice it. You are, Obviously, you pay your entrance fee, right? And then you drive up and to your immediate left, you see the lake, you see the first part of the lake. And then there's a spillway that I guess if you wanna go to your campsites, yeah. that you'll, you'll drive down and you know, you're driving right under the water. Like the yeah, water's right kind of uh, above you. Yeah, so we'll, we'll show you a little clip right here uh, of uh, us driving by. But that's pretty unique. And the cabins, the cabins were all facing the lake area. That was cool. Um, and then when we got to Penitentiary Hollow, um, I say it's something like out of Outlander because it really does look like you went somewhere else. Well, like you know, you know what? I posted some pictures online, right? And uh, a lot of people asked me, they were like, where is this? They thought it wasn't even in Texas. And uh, it's a rock climbing park. Obviously, you gotta, you gotta make well, a reservation. They have, and they have like the elm trees are lined up. It's like the rock area and then the elm trees. Um, and then there's a cave there. And it's pretty neat. We spent what, a good hour down there? Yeah, yeah. and this park's also a tra trailway. And if you like bike riding and stuff like that, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, but the hollows, that was definitely a highlight for us. And then what's cool is that the, the town, yeah, Mineral, we Wells, Mineral Wells, is, uh, is rich with history. They have uh, a hotel, a historic hotel there that they're actually renovating right now. And we wanted to get mineral water. And they have, um, what store did we go to to get that? Like a specialty store, like a tourist store? Anyway, we got flavored mineral water, and and, water. Si and since I came from Mineral Wells, like after that park, that's all I've been drinking is mineral water, right? Like I can't stop drinking this stuff. It's so good. Crazy water. Crazy water. Yes. Have you tried the crazy water or been to Mineral Wells? Let us know in the comments. Number four, Lost Maples. I love Lost Maples. This park is very popular during the fall months. Where else can you see fall colors in Texas? With rocks looking like a monkey and scenic views along the top of a 2200 foot cliff, I just love this park. And I love hiking at Lost Maples. Lost Maples, <laughs> I know that's not your favorite park. It's uh, my personal favorite no, park. I have a, I love Lost I have Maples. a love-hate relationship with Lost Maples. And I love Lost Maples, I like, I like the, the trail, the bottom trails, like monkey rock, um, well, that's a that's a point of interest, the point, but yeah, but but it's along the hike. But when you have to go up to the scenic, overview, everything we did was on East Trail, and um, we've done it twice. We done we done Lost Maple twice last year, and and both times. It's funny because uh, the first time we did it, I didn't tell her about the elevation gain, and I was really stuck on seeing all the points of interest. And uh, you know, she was so mad at me. She was so mad at me. But we did it, and then the second time we did it, it wasn't so bad. It was still, it was still a challenge, but it wasn't as bad as the first yeah. time we did it. Um, but the views on top are amazing, and that park is, is, is popular even after what October, November. Yeah. Um, but you gotta check the the park website to see the foliage, to see if the leaves are changing colors. And I was a little disappointed on our last time. Well, we went time. too yeah, early. We went too early uh, because there was like a drought going on. And um, but yeah, you want to check the uh, the park website, and they'll let you know. Even Facebook, that Facebook page does a good job of letting you know uh, when to go check it out. Before we get to our top three Texas state parks, here are some honorable mentions. Number three, Palo Duro Canyon. 
The second largest canyon in the country lies in the heart of the Texas Panhandle. Palo Duro is amazing. You can drive in the canyons for a scenic drive or hike. Our favorite trails during our recent visit was Rock Garden and the Lighthouse. The park is very popular. During the summer months, they have an outdoor musical called Texas Outdoor Musical. This park is huge. We are already making plans to camp here to visit the rest of the trails. This park is a must visit when traveling to Texas. Now guys, this was a tough choice because number two was gonna be number three, right? So we, we sat down and, and talk, kind of talked about it. Um, we love Palo Duro. Scenic, scenic views are amazing. Uh, there's tons to do inside the park. And all, you know, that park kind of reminded me of another park, right? What's that? Garner, <laughs> all right? Um, they have a store, or what is it called, the Post? Yeah, I mean, they have two stores, just like Garner. Yeah, the, the park kind of reminded me of Garner, not not the scenic views no. and stuff like that, uh, because you're on a Texas Panhandle. But as far as the activities in the park, there's a musical which is which I want to go to. It was closed due to COVID, um, going on COVID. But they had they actually gonna reopen it in 2021. So we want to check it out over the summer. It's only available in the summertime, guys. But there's activities in the park. There's horseback riding. There's tons of trails. Tons of campsites. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot of Garner, like with activities inside the park. Um, they had a museum. Yeah, they that, had a That museum. museum was pretty cool, and it kind of has the history, uh, talks about Native Americans, uh, the bisons that kind of roamed that area at the time, and uh, it's in Canyon, Texas. And we love the park, it's great, but the only, only thing that's the downfall, because it is a popular park, it's very crowded. Would you yeah. agree? No, all, with, I think all of the trails that we were on, it was like heavy traffic. Um, I don't think we went during a, any no, particular we, time, did we? We did, it was, it was, we went during Thanksgiving break. And, oh, uh, okay, maybe so, that's So a lot why. of people had time off yeah. and, but the Lighthouse Trail, I'll show you a clip right now. Um, it's just super crowded. I mean, I know that's one of the most popular, I think that's the number one trail yeah. at that park. But it's still worth I think that was, I enjoyed that trail, the lighthouse trail. Well, that we enjoyed the park, you know, but. Um, and you can eat right after. Yeah, that's what we you did. You don't have we, to go anywhere. They, uh, that's what we liked about the park too. Like yeah. you really don't need to go out. They have a, a park store. And at the end, uh, we decided we, yeah. to eat, the, eat a burger. <laughs> and you know what's new to the park too? They opened uh, those luxury uh, cabins. Yeah. The so, glamping. The glamping site. started glamping. So, not cabin, the glamping, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's new. Number two, Caprock Canyons, where the bison roam. Yes, you heard that right. Bison roam freely here at Caprock Canyon. This park has over 90 miles of trails. This park is unique with bison and prairie dogs. Hiking on Haynes Ridge Overlook Trail was a challenge, but the scenic views were amazing. What's crazy is that this park isn't even crowded. So what do you think about Caprock? I know we talked about this one and we kind of going back and forth with uh, Palo Duro and Caprock. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love Palo Duro, you love Caprock, but after talking about it, we decided that's our number two park that we visited in uh, 2020. Now tell me, why did you pick Caprock? Well, uh, I, Cap I, I, like the, I like Caprock because, <clears throat> I mean, number one, because of the bison and because you got to see them roam, you got to see them nap, you got to see them eat, you got to see them poop. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, um, you know, what I loved about the park is that we visited over 20 different Texas State Parks, right, in 2020, and out of all the parks that we've been to, I never see any anything like that. Like the bison, seriously, once you cross that gate, they tell you they're roaming freely. Even on the trails, they give you warning like, hey, they could be on the trails. And um, you know, the park is, which, which is crazy, it's, it's near Palo Duro, right? The views are kind of similar, um, mm -hmm. but there's like nobody there. Uh, we was on Haynes Ridge, where we ran into one person hiking that trail. Yeah. No, so, I think, yeah, I think we ran into a family, we ran into one person. Yeah, but um, compared to Palo Duro, Palo Duro, we ran into yeah. a lot of people. Um, but Cap Rock, it just felt like, you know, and then what's cool too, they have a museum. And they talk about the history of the park, they talk about the bison and how important uh, it was yeah. to uh, 
to keep the bisons in that area. Because the they, hike- almost, they almost went extinct. Well, and the hiking was good too. I mean, it's a little challenging in the beginning, the way we went. No, that you know what? In that park, Haynes Ridge was the first time we did a very challenging trail. Yeah. Because usually we do cha- we do challenging, right? Moderate and challenging. Mm-hmm. And that one we did very challenging. Yeah. So, I think we hiked, what, six, seven, no, eight, eight miles, miles that And day. you know what? We did eight miles that day, guys. And you yeah. know what? We've been kind of doing, what, four to, four to five miles every time we visit a park. But that, that, that park is so beautiful, so amazing. We, we decided yeah. to do eight. Yeah. It's, but, no, it's... Um, the views are perfect. The bison are perfect. The fern cave... It's weird to see a fern cave. Um, you know what's crazy? We went in December, right? And it was 70 degrees. The next day that we went was a little colder. But well, we had two days. We had two days at the park. We but did. um when we were in a fern cave, it felt like we were in AC. Yeah, it was it, cold. It was, it was cold. cold. Like the rest of the park, you know, it was kind of warm. You know, we was hiking and but once you get in that area, it felt really cool. It was it was dry. I don't know if anybody ever been in they have water going, right? We saw like it looked like a stream. So, but it was getting dark on our visit, unfortunately, and uh, we, we kind of finished the rest of the trail, hiking as fast as we could to get out of there. Uh, if you haven't been, check out. Cap Rock Canyon State Park. Here's our number one pick, Garner State Park. This comes at no surprise for anyone who has been here. This park is great for swimming, hiking, or enjoying a relaxing weekend. The park offers plenty to see and do. We went over the summer and we still talk about it. This park has mini golfing, a candy store, an ice cream shop, and a dance hall built by the CCC. You're gonna want to visit this park when in Texas. This park is very popular and definitely need to reserve online in advance to visit. You're gonna want to visit this park when in Texas. Ruth, let's talk about Garner State Park. This is our number one park. Why is our number one park? Because you can do anything imaginable, fun-wise. Well, I we, mean, we, I had guys. I had so much footage of this park. I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put those links in the description below. I had so much footage. I made three different videos of it. The first day we did Old Baldy. All right. Why is Garner our number one state park? <laughs> because everybody in our family enjoyed this park. Everybody. There was something for everybody to do and to enjoy um, at the park and at the time. I think like um, you and Isabel got to go hiking. Well, you know what? The first day we got to the park, we wasted no time. It was very hard to get into the park. Um, we, had, we reserved, what, a month ahead of time. And you know what? It was Father's Day weekend. The first day we got to the park, we did Old Baldy. Super challenging. The views were amazing. And, and while y'all went to Old Baldy, you guys we did. went putt putting and um, to the candy store. You guys have fun. You guys have fun <laughs> doing that, right? <laughs> and then day two, we uh, we had so much fun. We spent time in the water. We rented a kayak, right? And then we just spent seriously all day at the park. We got there yeah. at eight o'clock, and we didn't leave to what nine. All right, guys, you definitely want to book in advance when staying at Garden State Park. When we stood there, it was at half capacity. Uh, so they only let 50% uh, of people going into the park and camping, uh, which is unfortunate. So we actually had to rent a hotel room outside the park, which was like, what, 45 minutes away from the park? Mm-hmm. But going into the park, there was a line outside the gate. This is how popular this park is. There's a line outside the gate. Um, to Old Baldy, it was amazing. Uh, the scenic views were great. And then second day, we went swimming, right? And you guys loved that part. And then the kids, all the kids were asking us to go to the candy store. It was great, everything kind of close by, by the river, right? So the second day we got there, um, <coughs> we had stayed in a little town right outside. It was like 30, 45 minutes. We stayed in Uvalde. And so we went to a grocery store, um, picked up everything we were gonna eat for that day. And we swam all day. We grilled out there. Um, we, we grilled enough so we could eat all day. Um, y'all did some hiking that day? No, we did hiking the, on the last day. So y'all did swimming yeah, with us yeah. all day. So we did and swimming and we got to the park at eight o'clock. Yeah. And I don't know how it is, like we went during the Father's Day weekend and uh, I don't know how it is on a regular season, but we got tables right away. And well, we got there really early. 
Well, we got there at eight o'clock. Yeah, really yeah. early. So we got a table right away. But I mean, it, it's if you plan to get there any later, you're gonna have a hard yeah. time. Yeah, and I noticed, I noticed at what ten or eleven, it starts to kind of pick up some traffic. But we, the second day we were there, we swam like all day long, and we ate lunch and dinner there, and we had a we had a blast. The kids didn't want to leave. Uh, we didn't want to leave, but we only had a day pass. And then the third day. Me and Isabel, uh, we did uh, some other hiking trails, which were amazing. And we hiked so much, I didn't run into one person. It was crazy. And well, it was summer. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we I went know. we went early in the morning. We went early in the morning, yeah. and and I mean, we went to Old Baldy. That had some traffic. That had some people. But the other trails were empty. And uh, I like that, you know. And so I got to spend time with Isabel. And after we got done hiking we jump back into the Frio. I mean, what better way uh, to end the hike, jumping into some cold water, right? Um, the park's amazing. I highly recommend going to Garner State Park. It's our top park. Out of the 20 parks that we visited in 2020 in Texas, that's our number one park. And, uh, and I don't, again, it's our number one because everybody in our family enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. And guys, don't kill us um, in those comments. Remember, this is our top 10 Texas State Parks, and who knows, it might change. Uh, there's over 90 Texas State Parks, and you know, who knows what's out there. That's, that's our goal on this channel is to, to travel, to visit, to explore, and to hike every single Texas State Park, and you know, tell you guys our experience of the parks. Uh, we want to bring that information to you. I know when creating yeah. this channel, I know uh, there's a lot of videos uh, showing popular Texas State Parks, but I don't see too many showing yeah. the, you know. The smaller parks, um, like uh, Mother Nest, that's, our, that's my favorite small park. I want to hear from you guys. What are your top Texas State Parks? Let us know in the comments below. I know this will probably change as we continue to visit other Texas State Parks. If you haven't already, Please remember to subscribe to Mr. S Travel Quest. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.